and welcome to Noni, Yanga's flagship talk show where we discuss all the hot topics. I'm Lola Ogumbadejo, standing in for the wonderful Juliana Olayinka as she is on location in Lagos this week. Today we take a look at the rise of the plus size model and discuss the growth of African influence in British fashion. Joining me today, model and marketing manager Jacqueline Ulumoka, fashion editor Letemba Valiman and plus size model Vivian Eyo Afrim. Welcome, guys. Thank you, thank you, Lola. <laughs> From Ashley Graham to Crystal Wren, plus size models are increasingly recognized on catwalks and in the fashion industry. But with British women averaging at a size of 14 to 16, what exactly is plus size? Now, Vivian, I'm coming straight to you. <laughs> Two words, yellow bikini. In fact, three words, <laughs> yellow bikini ASOS. Oh, wow. Congratulations thank you. Thank on you that so campaign. Much. Now, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, can you just quickly brief us? Uh, so earlier this year I had a campaign with ASOS and I wore a yellow bikini. Um, we didn't expect it to go that that far but yeah. it did um, and it's just been brilliant it went since viral. then. Yeah. yeah, people actually loved that. People were talking about it, tweeting, yeah. etc. Now, you know, you've been to so many fashion shows. Yeah. How often do you actually see plus size models walking yeah. down the catwalks? Not very often to be honest. Mm. I think it's it's a bit of a weird thing because I mean, there's, there's, there's no reason why it shouldn't be the case that you see women of all sizes and all shapes and all looks and all colors on a catwalk all the time. But mm -hmm. um, the reality of it is that, you know, plus size models, at least when it comes to fashion shows, are definitely just a novelty item. Mm -hmm. They're a token. Um, Rick Owens did a show, I think it was probably like fall, winter 2016 or whatever, where he had all these African uh, women, quite big uh, sort of dance troupe women. Yeah. Um, and and it, was, it was fantastic because, you know, for a designer like that to be making that kind of statement, mm. it, was, it was a very positive sentiment, but it was still kind of like, he's just, it's a quirk. You know what I mean? It's just it's, it's a little bit of like, oh, oh, Rick did that, you know, this, this mm. season. And, and the next season he went back to his skinny girls and oh. boys, as, as he always does. And, and, and that's just how it is that, mm. you know, fashion still treats, I think, that the plus size model as a sort of, as a segment, as a sort of separate segment. And I don't think it should be like that, really. Now, Vivian, we're actually going to take a look at this epic image <laughs> of yours that went viral. Look at that. You look stunning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Thank my you. goodness. It's really popping against your melanin. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we do it. What would you say was the public reaction to that picture? I mean, I guess everyone was just really surprised at the fact that it was a bright bikini. It was a dark skin model. It was a plus size model at, at the same time. And nothing was edited. It wasn't retouched and things like that. I think it was just a very positive thing to put out. Um, and they did it just as normal. Like it was just like put on the website. And a, a young lady uh, called Lala must have tweeted it saying, go ASOS, this is brilliant. And it just went from there. And everyone was, was just saying, oh, this is positive. I love that I'm seeing people look like me, mm -hmm. things like that. It's just really like, wow, I was overwhelmed because I've never actually experienced anything like that before. So it was just really excellent to see. Yes, it was. And Jacqueline, you're a model yourself. I've seen you actually at Africa Fashion Week UK, I believe. Yeah. Now, do models come in different shapes and sizes? Do you agree with that statement? Yeah, of course they do. Um, I think, as Lysandra was saying earlier, it's one of those situations where there are women of all shapes, sizes, all colours, all races, everything. But the fashion industry hasn't got to the point yet where we're able to kind of just allow women to be women without being a token or without being a novelty or without being a kind of oh, this is different, like, what's, what's this? It's always a situation where we never really want to just kind of have everyone there to represent who they are. It's always about making something a norm and then making it a bit of an anomaly. And I mm. feel like we definitely need to do a lot more to make sure that women of all sizes or everything are represented. Mm. Can you break it down for me, actually, the sizes? Because I, I was told that from size eight, upwards it's a different term yeah so can you tell break down the terms for me so generally for a size six to eight you're like a high fashion model um catwalk model and then anything above a size eight is kind of seen as like a curve model um so like size 10 and then 12 upwards curve and then yeah it just kind of goes up from there okay the temper the average size of a woman yeah. in the uk is 14 to 16. Yeah. would you say that the fashion industry is sizist if there's such a term yeah. Even the whole notion of, 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 of what it is that's plus size is a little bit warped, isn't it? Like, what, what is that concept? Plus size, normal looking woman. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, 
it, it, it's, it's, we, we've gotten, we went way down, you know, far too far away from, from what it is that um, the ideal of, of being skinny as being, you know, the, 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 the good look. Um, mm. We just went, we took it way too far to the size zeros. Um, and I think that it's time that, you know, normal sized women or, or as I said, women across the spectrum in terms of what they look like, not just in terms of size, but also in terms of, of the skin color, the skin mm. tone, or in terms of, you know, their hair type, all these kinds of things. These are people that we see every day. These are the people that we know. And these are the people that fashion needs to start representing a little bit mm. so that people can see themselves within these, these fashion shows and catwalks. Exactly, because yeah. for me, for example, I'm going to reveal my size. I'm a size 12, I believe, I and I think I look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Positivity. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> right. Vivian, I love the fact that, you know, I looked at your pictures and I thought, wow, she's confident, she's resilient, she's tough skinned. Yeah, because yeah. in this industry, um, plus size models, they have to have those characteristics, yeah. would you say? Just talk to me about your experience as a model, actually, and how you even got into it. Okay, um, so I 100% agree with what you've just said. In, in regards to being very tough skinned um, you know social media is a crazy place it's good and bad um, so when I say being tough skinned there's comments that you'd see daily that you just have to be like okay I mean the first couple of times I was like hmm okay but then now it's just like you get it often it's not a big deal you know you're above that so you just don't need to reply to it or do, you don't need to be on that kind of level yeah. um other, other than that it's um it started last year so it'll be a year in september that i actually got signed to an agency um i applied for a competition on star now and i got signed to bridge models and they're the absolute best like they've just made so many things happen for me in terms of like sending me places and things like that um and i don't know it's just been crazy since then Aww. so this is basically a sign would you say that the industry is opening up even though we've still got some work to do would you agree um i think it definitely is a sign but i feel like just so much more needs to be done mm. um i just feel like even petite models as well i feel like they're not recognized a lot um, i have a lot of friends who are petite models i have a lot of friends who are curved models who also feel like they're still pushing they're still trying to get somewhere and they're not getting recognized but i feel like i think we take a step at a time and hopefully in 10 years time it will be even better than <laughs> 10 years now yeah <laughs> I think, honestly i feel like i see certain things and i'm like i feel like we take a step back mm. and then it's like what's going on why are we not why are we not just appreciating everyone for what they are I guess you also have to think about the fact that it takes time. I think, you know, yeah. for if it, I think the, the, the notion of beauty and what it is that is beautiful um, <coughs> has, you know, has evolved throughout history. And, and, and there are different periods where, you know, the, the you know, big women, for instance, in, in the 18th century would have been the absolute epitome yeah, of yeah. what it is that is beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. being um, and, yeah, yeah. Being exactly. And then that, that's what you wanted. Mm. Um, and, and you see how it all, you know, changes. Changed, um, you know, yeah. fashion shows when they first started in the 50s and the 60s, um, you know, the, 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 the women that modeled were, were, were certainly probably older. They were not going yeah. to be a 16 year yeah. old, that's yeah. for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, they were going to be older. They were going to be, you know, sort of matronly looking perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what you, that is you know that's what it was a fashion show for a woman exactly um, so you know I, I, I think we, we're starting and it's really good we, and it we, is yeah okay. we're getting momentum and we're doing really we well yeah, we're doing yeah. well yeah. So. <laughs> we're going to yeah. continue this conversation in just a second still to come we take a look at contemporary fashion and African influence and we ask are plus size models under more scrutiny than their thinner peers see you after the break Welcome back to Noni. Coming up, we take a look at the likes of Edward Enifor, who is pushing boundaries in a mostly white industry. But first, let's get back to our discussion. Now, Vivian, do you feel that plus size models are under more scrutiny than their thinner peers? I wouldn't say, I mean, I'd say yes and no, if anything. Um, everybody fights their own battles daily regardless like I feel like we can't compare both it's two different like industries or like different lanes um, we receive scrutiny I think thinner models receive that as well in terms of why do you look like that from normal people or, or but how, how do they mm. receive scrutiny actually thinner models? plus size or thinner models, thinner models. so um, I think now that we're evolving in terms of 
the plus size industry, I see comments daily on, on like thinner models posts where it says, why do you look like that? Or are you not eating and things like that? It shouldn't be like that because they're, they look just the same. Do you know what I mean? Like it shouldn't, be, oh, really? yeah. So people are saying that yeah. they're looking no, too like, skinny. You no, know, people do question and say, oh, why are your collarbones popping yeah. out? Or, oh, really? you know, yeah. are you actually working out? Why is your stomach not toned? Yeah. Or, you know, things like, like that. Like it's, it's their fault, yeah, but it's, it's just, not. Yeah. So Jacqueline, have you actually received any form of scrutiny? Or has anyone said anything negative to you? Yeah, of course. I would say generally models do always kind of have that whole am I still the same size I was like two weeks ago? Mm. Am I going to get booked for this job if I add on an extra inch? You know, that kind of thing daily. Mm. Um, and I've also received comments about like shapes in terms of my, my chin, my nose, um, my legs, things like that. So, yeah. But Temba, do you hear these types of conversations amongst models? Have you ever been with a model and said, oh, yeah. I'm too thin or I'm too big? Yeah, or, I've, I've um, got, yeah I'm, su I'm surprised actually to hear that, you know, people say that, oh, you know, to models that you look too thin. And that, yeah, that surprises yeah. me because all my model friends are always, you know, when it gets, you know, when, when we're getting talking, you know what I mean? Like, where it's like, okay, now we're talking, yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. they're always struggling to try and be thinner. Mm -hmm. um, but a admittedly, these are usually models who, who walk the catwalk, so they, you know, they had Paris Fashion Week, they had London Fashion Week, and so those kinds of, 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 of platforms usually require the models to be, you know, the sort of size two, size zero kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so a, a lot of my model friends a lot of times they know that they can't, they won't even go for auditions or, or wow. for, for particular brands because they yeah. know that those brands just will not choose you if yeah. you're not a size zero really? at all. Yeah, and so, you know, like w someone that looks to you probably to, to the average person to be like a little bit too skinny is like, oh my God, you know, mm. they're going to tell me I need to lose weight. I, don't yeah. I won't even bother. Exactly. And it's, all about, it's yeah. all about the measurements as mm -hmm. well because to you, they may look amazing, but it's like, are they that certain measurement and they need to be that certain measurement for that designer to use them and that's literally all it is. But also are they healthy? Literally. That's a very important point isn't it and I want to ask you Vivian you know when people think about <coughs> plus size models do they think oh unhealthy, fat, you know what what's your... 100% view? and I my, my view on that is you can't look at someone and say this person is not healthy I could be a size 30 if I wanted to and still be very healthy. You don't know what's going on underneath. You don't know what I do in my life. You don't know whether mm. I go to the gym or whether my, my diet is good. You don't know anything. New Look, which is a brand which was actually celebrated for celebrating, you know, plus size mm -hmm. women. But now they're being slammed because they're introducing fat tax. What do you have to say about that? Because I know, Latema, yeah. I'm going to ask yeah. you actually because you mentioned brands before. Yeah, yeah. So fat tax is actually charging extra money for bigger clothes <coughs> because yeah. using more material, yeah. that's, the, that's the supposed logic behind it. So what's your view? Big eye roll. I mean, that just sounds like rubbish, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It's just like, I mean, it's, it's like, well, how much more fabric <laughs> are you actually using that you're going to be charged? You know, I, I, I don't know. I, that, that there's something about that that doesn't that doesn't feel right. At the same time, though, I guess like kiddies' clothes are cheaper than adults' clothes, aren't they? And it could sometimes because be the exact same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's the logic that is used. I don't really buy it. Exactly. I think that I, I, I just don't. Jack, you know, know, Jacqueline, what's I was just gonna say. Let's talk about it. As a tall girl, a lot of clothes that I buy sometimes are more expensive, and especially with shoes, it can be more expensive as well. And I feel like it's absolutely ridiculous to say, oh, we're using more material to make a shoe, or we're using more material to make a dress when you can't help that size, that that's how you're born, that's how you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just find it ridiculous. I think all clothes should be the same price for everyone. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't, it does just it? doesn't There's just something about it that doesn't ridiculous. sit well. So, you know, oh, if it does dear. cost a little bit more to, 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 to make or to produce mm. um, the clothing for, um, for, 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 for bigger people or taller people or whatever, let the, the all the other you know normal sized people who buy all the clothes let them exactly. subsidize the, the, yeah. <laughs> the few. That's a point. <laughs> That's a point, Vivian. I'm going to quickly move on to you. Okay. Do you actually get like a bit annoyed when people call you plus size because you're actually the average size of the woman a woman in the UK? Yeah. How does it make you feel <coughs> when people say plus size model? I mean, I never get annoyed because it's just like the general term that's mm. used nowadays. It would be nice if it was just, she's a model instead mm. of she's a plus size model. Um, same with uh, smaller models. It shouldn't be like, oh, she's a petite model. Yeah. She's a this model. It should just be, you see someone, oh, I'm a model. Great, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. Mm. And we have so much more work to do in terms of getting to that stage. Mm. I do hope it's less than 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will be, <laughs> hopefully. But yeah, hopefully we get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah.
the world of publishing and fashion has always been predominantly white. So how important and influential was the appointment of Edward Enifel as editor-in-chief of British Vogue? I'm going to throw this question yeah, straight yeah, yeah, to yeah. you. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. <laughs> because well, you're yeah. a fashion editor yeah, yourself. Yeah. Now, yeah. I actually was watching an interview with Edward and Oprah, and I think what was so interesting about it was that Edward was in awe. He was almost like starstruck, I think. Yeah. And it just made me so, even though I don't know everything about fashion it just yeah. made me think wow two powerful black people you know doing great things now a lot of people were excited and i want to ask you do you think it was because the person who got that position you know chief editor yeah. in chief of british vogue was black or that it was a black male mm. or that it was a black male of african descent yeah i think it was black male um, okay. i think predominantly i mean the previous um, um, uh, editor-in-chief at, at, at British Vogue had been there for 24 years, mm. as, as this woman, um, white woman, uh, if, if I, I need to say that. Um, and if you think of all the other Vogues as well, you know, Anna Wintour in the US, uh, you know, Catherine Reifeld mm. um, in, in, in Paris, they, you know, it's all predominantly a white woman gig, right? Um, and so to have a black man, um, uh, you know, as, as appointed as, as the editor-in-chief of, of, of a Vogue, was um, was fantastic. Um, incidentally, um, our, uh, the next issue of our magazine um, is, is 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 on Africa Rising. Glam Africa um, magazine, yeah. yes. yes, Glam Africa. Magazine. That's it. And um, and we have a sort of like I think one of the first few pages of the, the magazine is going right. to be a <laughs> is going to be a sort of salute <laughs> and an homage okay. um, to 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 Edward Enninpool because what he did is 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 truly fantastic. It, it's um, yeah, it's it's one of these sort of um, epic moments that yes. you look at and you think. This is fantastic. Um, I met him actually. It was so oh, weird. Okay. Before, yeah, before he became, before he was appointed. It was a few months before he was appointed, um, um, and and I was so starstruck. I was like, <laughs> I literally, and, and no one knew who he was at the time because he was very much, you know, he had been the fashion editor at W Magazine, so all very fashiony. Mm -hmm. um, and he and I was, uh, I was like. Oh my God, Edward! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. And he was so nice. Now, Jacqueline, you are a model, as we've mentioned before. Um, would you say that it's really, you know, black models are rising, or black people in fashion in general are actually on the rise? Would you say? Definitely. I think black people are so influential in fashion. I think within music, entertainment, everything we do, we're just, we're number one people who are buying fashion. So I feel like we should be represented. We should be at the top, in the middle, the customers, everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I think especially when Edward was appointed, it was absolutely fantastic. I remember how social media just went crazy. Yes. I just remember everyone was celebrating and we all felt like it was a family member. You know, <laughs> someone, yeah. Honestly, yeah. We all felt like it was someone we yeah. knew who had made it. Yeah. And I feel like yeah. we, are, we are making waves. And I definitely feel like it's, yeah. it's about time. We need to be there. We need how, how are we making waves, would you say? How has this actually changed the game? I feel like a lot of us now understand um, how important it is to be in a position of power. So a lot of people are starting their own brands. I think before, people often thought, oh, if I start a brand and I'm black owned, people won't support me. But people understand that you can start a fashion label, you can start an agency, you can be a model, you can do so many different things and you'll make it, you'll be successful. And I think down to people like Edward who kind of set the pace and, you know, Naomi Campbell, you know, so many great people who go forward and were able to follow suit. So, yeah. Exactly. I think that's the other thing about Edward that's really, that. that at least from the, I, don't, I think there's been, how many issues has he done now? Maybe six or seven, yeah. I can't really remember. Mm -hmm. But obviously, um, the, the most recent issue, for instance, where, you know, Oprah was on the mm. cover. Yes. Um, and I think that that's what you mentioned mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, um, yeah that was like epic. Oprah yeah. has never looked better in her entire yeah. existence, yeah. right? Like, looked incredible. Snatched. Yeah, completely. <laughs> she did. She did. She looked amazing. Yeah, she Gorgeous. looked amazing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that he, he, he very much has a sense about the empowerment of black people in general, and yeah. I think uh, black women in particular. And I think that that's very important. I think anyone who is going to have that as a sort of mm. um, an attitude or, or, or as a sort of principle in, in, in their life is, is someone that I am definitely going to be behind and is, yes. is a champion for, for our cause, and I think that's great. What would you say Glam Africa is doing to really help the you know, fashion industry in terms of black people? So Glamour Africa is about promoting lifestyle, so everything from fashion, entertainment, culture, beauty, all of that. And we're all about kind of bridging the gap. So we are um, distributed in the UK, Ghana, South Africa and Nigeria, but we showcase people from all of these countries. And we're kind of showing people in the UK what people in Ghana are doing, what people in South Africa are doing. So we're literally showcasing everything, pushing fashion, pushing beauty, um, obviously talking about who's upcoming, who's rising. As you mentioned, we've got um, a new um, top 35 who's in Africa who's doing 
doing great things. We feature in the magazine at the moment. So all about kind of, yeah, just pushing out who's doing something, who do you need to know, mm. who in the African community is actually out there being successful. Oh, so. brilliant, brilliant yeah. answer. Now, quickly and lastly, <laughs> Vivian, tell me, what can we expect from you as a model in the near future? Because right now you're on a roll. Okay, we're all rooting for Thank you. God. <laughs> Are things changing in the industry, would you say? And should, what should we expect from you? Uh, yes. 100% things are changing, especially in the plus size industry. Um, one thing I really love to say all the time when people ask me this question is how I love when you go underground and you see like a, a ad and yeah. there's a like a skinny model and there's a plus size model together. I absolutely yeah. love when I see it, I'm just like, hi. <laughs> hi. It's so brilliant to yeah. see. Whereas maybe two years ago when I was in college, I would never ever see that anywhere yeah, on like billboards yeah. and things oh. like that. So it's definitely grown and I'm definitely excited to see more. Hopefully I get to see one of those because that would be great. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, Claim it, declare amen, it, it's happening, amen. it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so amen to everything, so yes. hopefully, yeah. Well, you heard it here first. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. You've been absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's it from me, Lola Ogumbadeja, and my fantastic guests, Jacqueline Ulumoka, Latemba Veleman, and Vivian Ayo Ephraim. And don't forget, Noni is now online. Wherever you are in the world, go to yangatv.com to check out every single episode. Join us next time for more Noni Chat. Goodbye.